watching The 7 from WATE 6 on your side. Good evening, I'm Bo Williams, and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories happening right now and topping the list for us tonight. Looking for answers in a deadly house fire. It claimed five lives over the weekend, four of them children. And we just learned the names of those children. Family confirming to us they were two sets of siblings. 15-year-old Briseis uh, Aljumili and 5-year-old Gabriella Aljumili, along with 9-year-old Audrey Cooper Fortner and 5-year-old Evie Cooper Fortner. Now, that fire happening Sunday in the 300 block of Clinch Valley Road. That's in the Luttrell community of Union County. A TBI spokesperson telling us that one adult was found dead along with those four children inside the mobile home. Our crew at the fire scene found Dennis Longhurst, who says the victims were members of his daughter's family, but she wasn't home at the time. Today, Longhurst told us he traveled overnight from South Carolina to be with her. They couldn't give me no details on it and that, so I just told them, I said, look, we're getting in our car, we get our stuff together, we're heading this way, and that's what we did. We uh, drove up last night and uh, finished the drive this morning to get up here and that, and I thought, well, I want to come out here, I want to see the place. All I could think about the whole time was, how does, how do you not get out, I mean, how does a person like that not get out of a house like that? Union County Schools is saying that it has made additional counselors available for students and the director of schools saying, quote, our hearts are heavy. Now, the TBI and Union County Sheriff's Office are working to figure out exactly what happened. Of course, we will keep you posted as more answers come into the newsroom. Our next big story for you, nearly 100 people sighted in a raid on a cockfighting event. That's according to the Animal Welfare Group, showing animals respect and kindness. The nonprofit says the Union County Sheriff's Office broke up a cockfighting derby when, uh, while it was happening Saturday afternoon, preventing more fights that had been planned throughout the day. Now, apparently, hundreds of chickens were involved, and now the nonprofit says it is looking for a chicken rescue organization in the area. Tennessee, by the way, considers cockfighting as a Class A misdemeanor, while it is considered a felony by the federal government. Our next big story, a big mess in Jefferson City. It's because of a water line break. Take a look at some of this video and you'll see exactly what we're talking about. Our crew brought this back within the last hour. This is at the intersection of Highway 11E and George Avenue. Now, at last check, one eastbound lane of Highway 11 was closed along with a stretch of George Avenue south of that intersection. Now, you'll probably want to avoid that area for a while. We'll keep watching for the work to wrap up and the roadway to reopen. But again, quite a mess there. And then another traffic alert for you, a rock slide uh, closing one of the legs of the Y in Townsend. The Great Smoky Mountains National Park saying Laurel Creek closed there. Uh, Laurel Creek Road is closed in that area and describing this slide as large. At last update, crews were working to clear it, but no word right now on just how long this is going to take. Of course, we'll stay on top of it, continue to monitor the cleanup, and keep you posted. Our next Big 7 story for the effort to find a boy at the center of an endangered child alert. Uh, you see this picture here behind me. Take a good look at it here for a second. This is 8-year-old Josiah Rogerson. Maryville police say they got a call Sunday night claiming he had been taken from his home by his biological mother who does not have custody. Now, investigators say Josiah was last seen wearing gray shorts, a green jacket, and black tennis shoes. His mother, Alicia Jones, is wanted by Maryville police on a warrant for custodial interference. Anyone with information is asked to please call 1-800-TBI-FIND. The next story on our Big 7 list for you is different charges against a man accused of shooting a store worker. You may remember this video shared by the Knox County Sheriff's Office as Larry McBee was taken into custody, taken into the county detention center at the end of a manhunt. Now, we were in court this morning to follow up as prosecutors were able to have the case against McBee up from second degree to first degree murder. They claim that McBee basically admitted to the homicide in a FaceTime video with a family member, a judge deciding to send this case to the grand jury. We've been telling you 23-year-old Tristan Smith was killed while he was working at the Rural King and Halls. At the time, the Knox County Sheriff had told us McBee was shoplifting ammo before getting into a scuffle and pulling the trigger. McBee's bond has been revoked since late December. Our next Big 7 story for you, an effort to help more people afford higher education. Tiana Chiefs, wanting to turn the tide of a 10-year low for Knox County's college-going rate, now below 60% of high school graduates. County leaders want that portion up to 70% of high school seniors enrolling in college by 2024. UT Knoxville Chancellor Dondi Plowman talking today about the teamwork needed now to reach that goal. But we know that to have to be able to place young people in the jobs we need in the future, we got to step forward and say this is important. 
it matters. Your life after high school, you need to start thinking about shaping it now. Chiefs hosted the event today. It also helped create the Tennessee Promise Program, which has sent more than 136,000 students to college for free since its creation. And we're wrapping up our Big 7 list with more information on the new Parking Pass program coming to the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Have you ordered yours yet? By now, you may have seen the ads running on air for what's been dubbed Park It Forward, selling these parking passes to help pay for future maintenance and upgrades to the park. That's part of a, an awareness campaign that's getting underway. A park spokesperson tells us you'll see those ads on the Internet and the airwaves the next several weeks so that park visitors are not caught off guard when the change happens. Now, we've been telling you about the new parking pass requirement for the National Park. A day pass is going to run you 5 bucks, a week pass is 15 and an annual pass is $40. And the park, well, says an annual tag, that uh, annual tags that are bought before March 1st will be valid through March of 2024. People pulling over for less than 15 minutes, you will not have to pay for a parking pass. And if you have a handicap license plate or a handicap tag, you will not be required to have a parking pass either, so keep that in mind.